Camera speed. Sound production, take one. Action! Welcome to the End of the Fangirls podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Lexi, and we're two girls with a slight obsession of everything pop culture. As promised, we're doing Hocus Pocus too. I, I genuinely did not believe this would be what we were filming today. I know. I'm but, impressed with myself. I almost didn't watch it. I know, and I was really, like, when I watched it and I, like, saw it, what it was like, I was like, no, Sam, you have to watch it. <laughs> yeah. And it took some arm pulling. It really it did. did. It did. <laughs> and I put it on while I was writing. Yeah. And admittedly, there were times I wasn't writing and I was actually paying attention to, and it goes against everything I believe in. <laughs> but, like, the entire day that it came out, my mom's like, oh, have you watched it yet? Like, everybody's talking about it. And I'm like, no, that movie's shit. I don't want to watch it. And the next day, like, she came home, and I'm like, mom, I watched it. But, okay, I told you before you watched it. I was like, it's two totally, completely different vibes. Yeah. I agree with that. It's very different. Okay. Okay. And I came up with a whole ass theory yesterday <laughs> as to why, Sam, we're going to get into this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, a few episodes back. We went at it a little bit, like, on a side tangent. I don't even remember um, what episode that was. Me either. But it sparked it sparked a debate last night when I was with friends. Like, we were really? arguing over which one was better. Two of us agreed it's Camp Rock, while the no. other two were mad that we thought it was High School Musical. So I think the, this is a generational thing. So I was the High School Musical generation, and Sam was the Camp Rock generation. And as everyone should know, the Kenny Ortega directed High School Musicals, all the High School Musicals, and Hocus Pocus. And since Sam is not a High School Musical girly, Listen, I just don't think she likes Kenny Ortega, which is the fine. The second and third High School Musical are better. But oh, if I'm we're talking <laughs> first ones, I prefer high. I prefer Camp Rock over High School Musical in the first one. I just hate Camp Rock in general. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, all right, that's why you don't like the original Hocus Pocus. But I was like, our all-time favorite rom-com and the best rom-com that is actually yeah, it's, um, it's, of all time it's, yeah. is The Proposal. And the no, woman that directed The Proposal also directed Hocus Pocus 2. So that's why she likes the second one <laughs> and not the first. It's science, man. It is. Um, but yeah. She bought, I forgot her name. What is her name? Anne Fletcher. Thank you. She bought the comedy to Hocus Pocus 2. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she did. Yes. Um, yeah, I, it's going to get me so canceled. I hate the first one. I thought it was very, very bad. I didn't think it was funny. I thought it was very annoying. Never said it was funny. <laughs> no, but I just, like, was watching it. I'm like, why do people love this so much? Like, I really just didn't get it. And then, like, I'm just like, I don't want to watch the second one because I think it's going to be, like, the same kind of thing. And, like, at times, I kind of felt that way. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't really like the beginning with them. Uh, I didn't care young, about the beginning. Except yeah. for the one part that we yes. must get to, obviously. Uh-huh. But, like, I didn't really love that. But, like, I actually really liked the main teenagers, yeah. And I thought they were actually funny. Yes. Which I think helped because I didn't care for the kids in the first one. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought they were kind of really annoying. No, the kids were definitely annoying. One thing I will say the about one. the original, though, kind of made me sad at the end. <laughs> like, the when she sang goodbye to, Yeah, like, when she sang goodbye at the end to, like, Binks. Oh, Binks? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh... Wasn't expecting this to get a little deep, okay? <laughs> no, that fine. was sad. I, I will say that. Um, I I enjoy the first one. I do think the second act kind of loses me. Mm. And then the end, it kind of picks back up. It definitely had its moments, mm-hmm. I think. But overall, it just wasn't. Yeah. I, I feel like maybe I would have a different opinion if I grew up watching it. But it was... Yeah. Okay, it's technically the first and a half time that I've seen it because I watched like a good chunk of it like a year or two ago didn't like it and then I just watched it in full so I feel like if I had that nostalgia factor I would like mm-hmm. it more but 
my mom was actually telling me yesterday that every like October, if she had to get like tours down around the house and Hocus Pocus was on, she literally sat me in front of the TV to watch it. So I think it's definitely like a, once again, a generational thing. Like, because I think even like Macy and Lib, when we were having this conversation once, they're like, like they said to me, they're like, how have you never seen it? Like, I feel like it's a movie you like. And I'm like, I'm more of a practical magic kind of girl Mm -hmm. than I was Hocus Pocus. I've never, still never seen Fun to Magic. We'll eventually get there. We'll, yeah. we'll get there. I think you'll like it. It has its oh, it has I don't its think moments, I it has its moments <laughs> where it's not that great. Like there's a storyline I'm just not crazy about, but it's important and it's got a really good love scene. It's the like, guy. I don't know if there's multiple guys, but when I look it up on Letterbox, there's a picture of Nicole Kidman and this man. He's on ER. So I was like, wait, Lucas in this? Maybe I will like it. <laughs> You said on Letterboxd? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Letterboxd. It's the man I'm thinking. You definitely, he's in the episodes with Machen, so you have seen him. But you have also might have only watched Machen scenes, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I, I, he's probably, like, bad and trash, and, like, I, I got that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, oh. But he's kind of hot. Oh, he's very hot. He's very fine. He he no, he's not the one who gets with Linda Cardellini. No, he is. He is? Okay, I'm like, he, I feel like he looks like him. Yes. They look very different. This guy's wearing eyeliner, the other guy's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Two totally different vibes. Yeah, can't tell the difference. No, I can't. Yeah, we got to make out with Nicole Kidman and Linda Cardellini. And more, more tin, I can't pronounce her name. More tinny? Is that? Oh, Laura, who? Mora? Mora. No. I don't know who she is, so maybe I should. Hold on, hold on. Tyranny. Tyranny. Oh. Yeah, I can't pronounce names. Yeah, it's fine, because that's. I don't know how to pronounce it either. Okay, good, good. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, anyway, I didn't like Hocus Pocus. (laughs) I prefer practical magic. So, like, obviously that's your opinion. I'm also with Hocus just more of, like, too. yeah, I'm just also more of, like, a horror movie person yeah. when it comes to Halloween than I am, like, a... a <laughs> Which I think is why I like it, because I w- I'm not into horror. Yeah. I, I feel, get me yeah. into it. Because, <laughs> like, even Fran, she sent me, like, her movie list of what she's watching, and there's... No horror. It's... Technically, like, there's Scream and there's okay. the Fear Street movies, but, like, that's, like, baby horror. No yeah. offense, Fran. <laughs> just, like, those aren't that scary to me anyway. Like, maybe yeah. I'm just desensitized now, though. But, like, whereas, like, my list is, like, primarily horror, and that's, like, yeah. what I gravitate towards, so it's kind of, like, hard to grab my attention mm-hmm. when it comes to um, stuff. Yeah, like, I watch Halloween Town, and Sam watches Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also just rewatched. I actually just watched Halloween Town for the first time since I was like a kid, like last year, and I loved it. So I thought, sure. that, and I thought I hated Halloween Town because I just every time it would come on as I was a kid, I would like change the channel. Oh my God, once so, again like, a generational thing. God damn. What was the other movie I recently just like rewatched because I thought I hated it? Oh, Beetlejuice. That could be yeah. a whole other episode though. <laughs> that could be. I that gave it four stars after I thought I hated this movie. <laughs> was a complete 180. It was. Um, what was it? Oh, so when obviously uh, I'm the Hocus Pocus fan, where yeah. Sim was not, <laughs> um, I'm always, like, a hesitant when they want to, like, do a sequel yeah, or do, like, a remake. Girls. I'm yeah. really not. So. I still have a grudge against Mom, yeah. <sighs> but it gets a path for having Christine like, Bronson. Yeah. It's not, like, awful, but. You know. Oh, it's just depressing. <laughs> yes. I think it's something yes. with sequels because Hocus Pocus 2 took a little bit of a turn. It got a little sad. Oh no, it definitely it was so sad. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like Lexi, you cried. <laughs> I did cry. Um but yeah, so I was a little hesitant going in and I'm just also not a fan of Bette Midler. She really ruins the first movie for me. <laughs> but, That's so funny, because I think I don't think she's my favorite, but the one I don't like is Mary. Yeah. I don't like her. I know. 
But she grew on me in this one. I'll say that. You know, and for I just. Some reason, it's the worst thing is that Sarah Jessica Parker is the unsung <laughs> hero of these movies. I know. What well, a year it's... it's been for Sarah Jessica Parker, man. <laughs> we literally were preparing her this year to seeing her in a show. We're like, this girl's funny. And then we're watching this. Yeah, and we're like, we literally why do left we like her, her show and we're like, wait, why do we kind of stand? <laughs> Meanwhile, I think if you watch her in just like that episode, we're like, wow. She's Sarah Jessica Parker <laughs> yeah. came out all the way. Yes. Sarah, Still we're, feel that we're, way. we're sorry, but, like, only sorry for holding that part of a grudge, because you're fine. Yes. Please come on the she, podcast. Oh, my God. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was, like, once the, like, day got closer to, like, the sequel coming out, I got more excited, and then I got really excited. It took me three hours to watch this movie, not because I was bad. I just kept getting yeah. sh- it with shit. Um, but, like, when I finally was able to, like, press play and, like, finish the movie, I was like, this is actually really funny. And if anyone knows me from previous episodes, I love campy shit. And this was camp. It's camp very one. campy. Yeah. So, I think uh, that's what made it. I better. think that's why I liked it. Yeah. Because, like, yes, like, the first one is, like, campy, but I feel like they tried to be, like, I think they, like, tried maybe to do a bit of camp. Yeah. But, like, I think they've tried to also make it scary in some ways. Yeah. And, like, also, like, try to be serious, but also try to make it funny. And I'm just, like, pick pick a genre. Yes. Whereas I think this one just, like, leaned into the pure nostalgia and, like, Mm-hmm. campiness and I think that's what this movie needs to be a movie about witches who eat children to stay young does not need to be a serious movie it deserves to be campy yes it does it does it the camp worked very it well it worked very well um I actually really liked it I, I it. told you I liked it it goes against everything I believe in have I lied to you before about stuff that you No, like? and that's the problem. Like, I'm like, I don't know why I denied you, because you're the only one I trust to give me recommendations for anything, because you're the only one who I know knows what I'll like. Because there has not been one thing that I think you recommended me that I haven't enjoyed. I know. I know. So Sam just needs to take my word. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone ever uh, recommends me stuff, don't take it personally. If I don't watch it, I just don't trust anybody but Alexi. <laughs> Wait, like, literally someone can... <laughs> Like, recommend something, and you'll be like, I'm not going to watch it. I'm be like, no, Sam, watch it. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, watch Abbott Elementary. I'm like, no. And like, he's like, watch Abbott Elementary. I'm like, okay, I'll watch it in November. It's so good, though. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. I'm so sorry. It's fine. It's fine. fine. That's okay. You keep recommending things to me, and I just don't watch them. <laughs> That's okay. It's because I don't think I have as good a recommendation, <laughs> like, mind as you do. I'm just like, watch my favorite movies right now. I just, but that's also back to the You're thing. Also I thought not a movie. 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 Yeah. <laughs> you also try to get to me to watch Gilmore Girls and Grey's, but I just don't think I'll like yeah, either. I, I, that. <laughs> yeah, I still think Grey's would be, like, fun for, like, a background show just because you watch DR. And I think it's, again, campy in the first seasons, and then it gets serious, which is boring. Okay. But, like, the campy episodes are really fun. <laughs> like, there's a Halloween episode where a guy just, like, thinks his leg is haunted, so he saws it off in the ER, and it's wonderful. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Anyway, this episode's about Hocus Pocus. Yes. I guess we should really just jump right in to our thoughts of the movie. Yeah, and the last two episodes have been very low in energy, and, like, we've been, like, tired and not talky, talkative. So, like, this episode's just all over the place, and I'm not really sorry about it. <laughs> no. We... It's about... You deserve it. You guys deserve it. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. What was it? So... I guess we could sort of touch on the beginning. Like you said, yeah. I didn't care for the kids. I don't think they... I will say the girl that played young Winifred got the mannerisms down really well. Yeah, I just wish she would have had more of a, the voice. Yeah. But I just really... I didn't care for them. No. I didn't like any of them. I also don't... I really rem- didn't like the one who... This sounds so mean that I'm just, like, attacking a child. Child. I didn't like the one who played... Sarah Mary. or Mary. Okay. No, Mary. I didn't like Sarah's either. Hold on. Okay. I mean, like, you can talk. I'm just... I'm Very good. Now that I feel like the one who played young Sarah was in Halloween. <laughs> and I feel like I didn't like her in that. She was not. Never mind. Okay. Her name is Juju. 
Interesting. I feel like we've touched on this before, or even maybe I've touched on it. We touched on it like separately. Child actors now are just really hard to come by. Yeah. Some of them just don't have it. You know who it. should have been casted? The one who was in the black phone. The little girl from yeah. that. She was great. Put her in everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't feel like. I think the only one who really caught the mannerisms was the one who was Winifred, but mm-hmm. she also didn't have the voice, which threw me off. Yeah. But then Sarah was like a little too much. Yeah. And like it just kind of came off. I'm sorry and then like Mary just like I'm just like you and if I didn't know that's who she was supposed to be I don't think I would have figured it out okay because like she wasn't even doing like the mouth thing yeah it's fine because that drives me nuts for some reason (laughs) but like she wasn't doing that and then like she didn't sound like her either and I'm just like it just bothered me I didn't really pay too much attention to them (laughs) to be completely honest apparently um they also I think I think Winifred was supposed to be 16, and I swear she looked 10. Because she, she was supposed to get married. Did you miss that whole entire first part? Yep. Okay, so <laughs> when she's, like, running back to the cabin to meet her sisters, the priest or reverend, like, matched her to marry someone. Okay, I feel like I do vaguely remember this, but I don't really think I, like... Okay. I think I was paying attention, but, like, not, like, paying that much. Yeah, yeah, So... And I was like, this girl looks like 12. Yeah. Why are we sending her off to marriage? And again, it's the 1600s. She could be 12. That is true. That is true. But I also didn't know. Billy was. It wasn't her boyfriend. She just happened to kiss Billy. And that was like against the rules because you were not allowed to kiss before marriage. But I didn't know Billy was her love interest. Even in the first one. I didn't get that either. I just thought they made friends in the afterlife or some shit like that. (laughs) And that's who Billy was. But no, apparently Billy is... Winifred likes Billy, but Billy didn't really care for Winifred, which was given off in the first movie, obviously. But I guess that was the backstory as to why. Okay. Um, Wait, I just... Do you want me to send you the synopsis? No, I got it, actually. Okay. So, one of her friends says, Sanderson's banished from Salem by Reverend Trask after she defied the authority of the church by refusing to marry John Pritchett. But, yes, she looked 12. And she I was did. like, this girl should not be married. Also, like, <laughs> I know this is nitpicky, but, like, it's so weird. I guess it's because she's a kid. But, like, just, like, the teeth looked so humongous on her compared to Bet. <laughs> Yeah, like, you couldn't have gave the poor girl, like, a thinner model or something like that. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, that didn't bother me so much, but I'm just, like, you look so uncomfortable in every scene you're in. Yes. Uh, But then, arguably, the best part of the entire movie that lasted five minutes. Yeah, um, one of my two favorite scenes. Yes. They go to the Forbidden Forest, and the queen mother witch played by... The one, the only fabulous Miss Hannah Wanningham. Emphasis on mother. <sighs> Mommy! <laughs> Mommy, sorry. <laughs> Mommy, sorry. <laughs> um, first off, she started singing in the second. Uh, oh, what was. <sighs> it's like Is the, it com- the song that's the It's the one that Sarah sings. Yeah. Okay. Sarah sings it in the end of the first one. Okay. As soon as, like, the first note, I was like, oh my god. That's it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Little rude of them for her not to be right. on screen. But her voice is so recognizable that I'm like, Anna, like, where are you, girl? At first, I love that she was a bird. Right? <laughs> kind of iconic. Kind of sexy. It was. It was. And she was a sexy bird. Oh, and she was a sexy witch. God damn. Oh my god, yes, she was. I... Like, I think she should be in a corset in everything ever. Jason Sudeikis, if you're watching this, which I know you are, hint, hint. Yes. Yeah. For her wedding dress when you marry her. Oh, my God, yes. Like, (laughs) Like what's that one? Corset ball gown. Yeah, what's that one award show she went to where it's, like, the light pink, and it's, like, very form-fitting? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, like, very form-fitting up top, and then it's, like, very poofy at the bottom. Was that the newest one she just wore? No. Yes. It was? The most recent Emmys? Yeah, I think it was. I think so. It didn't have shoulders, right? No. 
Yeah, that was, I think, the most recent. It was a night. really good look, and I think we should make that her wedding dress. For real. For real. Um, but yeah, so the girls are not witches at this point either, which I thought was a little confusing. Yeah. Or, no, maybe they were witches, but on the 16th birthday, oh, wait, no. The 16th birthday, a witch gets her powers. Right. Which is funny, because I think in Halloween Town, it's the 13th birthday. But it's okay. Um, Which movies are never cohesive. Fair, fair. Same with vampire movies. They just never follow the same lore as each other. No, it's they don't. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, so Hannah gives her book with all the spells Can and whatever. talk about when she, like, lifts up Sarah by the throat? Because, like, I have never wanted to be a 12-year-old so bad in my life. Same. Oh, it's it was so hot. Yes. I'm, like, actually really offended she got only, like, five minutes of screen time. Right? She Well, she said, like, you'll blink and you'll miss me. And I was like, Miss Wanaham, you were a little too much on there. You had, like, a five-minute role. Yeah. Which was a great five minutes. It was a wonderful five minutes. It was. And I also, blink and you'll miss me, girl. You are, like, six foot tall. Mm-hmm. A gorgeous specimen of a human being. We I know. We missing you. I cannot miss her in a crowd anytime. No, definitely not. And I loved her hair. Her hair looks so good, wavy. God damn. Also, it was like purplish gray, and like I just think she should do that IRL. Yes. I love the blonde, but it was just fun. It was. It was. Anyway, end of podcast. Hannah wanted to the best part. <laughs> For real. Um. I was going to say, but she teaches them, like, oh, not to do the one spell on Magica Maxima, and that to stay young and beautiful, that you have to eat the lives of children, and that is why Hannah Monaghan still looks young. I would offer myself to you. Mm -hmm. I'd ask her to, like, eat me from, like, feet up, though, so, like, I could at least, like, witness it for a bit. Yes, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Um, yeah, so... She's staying young and forever, and I love that for her. I love that for her. Like, um, I would offer up my firstborn for her. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Easily. Like, it's a personal sacrifice. hmm And then, after that, did the witches, the Sanderson sisters, go cast spells on everyone? Right, their house, I feel like their house started burning, or whatever. Something happened. Okay, something happened. Yeah, they don't have that listed. I know. Okay. But something happens. Anyway. Something we... happens. Anyway, doesn't matter. The kids are annoying. Yeah. So then they flash forward to present day. And this is also where I was, like, really hesitant. Because when you bring in new kids into a franchise, it is still, once again, very hit or miss. And to have them, like, the main characters. Yeah. These girls were good. They were really good. <laughs> it honestly, like didn't feel like it was a Hocus Pocus movie. Yeah. Like, I'm watching this, and it kind of reminded me of, like, The Craft in a way. Like, the, okay. new, the new craft they made, I didn't actually, like, watch it in full. I watched it for Michelle Monaghan. But, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it kind of just gave me that vibe, and I like, yeah. liked it. Like, I honestly maybe would have just, like, watched that movie, just, like, focusing on these girls, because I actually think they were really, really good. Mm-hmm. And even... The storyline was a little slow to begin with, I will say. Yeah. Um, what are the girls' names? Uh, Becca, Becca Izzy, Izzy, and Cassie. Yeah. Okay, so Becca and Izzy are Becca's still Becca's our main one, correct? I think so. Yeah. Because it's Becca's birthday. Yeah, Becca's 16th birthday. Yes. So Becca's the main girl, Izzy, and then Cassie. And Cassie's no longer friends with them because she got a boyfriend. <laughs> Basically. I love people <laughs> like that. Put a curse on her. For real. Um, But Cassie's father is obsessed with Halloween. And Cassie's father looks like the Reverend from 1692, I think it said. I'm sorry, 1653. I didn't even clock that. And I had the same issue when I watched um, Fear Street 8, no, 1666. Because the one guy who's like in the current timeline is also in the 1666 timeline, and I didn't even put it together that they were the same actor. 
That's Apparently okay. just putting a long-haired wig on a man just really throws me, I guess. No, I didn't really notice it either. Yeah. I really didn't. Also, I Loki thought he was the guy who plays Scott Clark in Stranger Things. Because they kind of look similar. Who is he, though? Because he looks I don't so... Know. He's is someone, he, is though. He maybe? <laughs> I don't think he is. He's from something that I've seen, I feel like. Oh, no, that's the guy that plays big. Uh, Tony Hale. Love heat. Simon. Oh, he was in the Heat. I know from that. Well, who did you say, Tony Hale? Yeah. He's in RV. I haven't seen RV in so long. I recognize him. I will, like, I will say that. Yeah. Nothing else I'm seeing is something that I feel like you've seen. Okay. I feel like maybe he's a TV actor. He probably is. He's got the face for a TV actor. Anyway. Yes, anyway. <laughs> um. So all the three girls are obsessed with, like, witchcraft and Halloween, obviously. Yeah, Becca starts putting, like, a... Starts, like, murmuring spells to the one guy to like spook him yeah for uh cassie's boyfriend yes which he has a name what is his name i don't know oh this guy was in a series of unfortunate events i don't know if you watched that uh he was well, in that's sex definitely in the city? One. yeah i did see that too well, who was he in sex in the city sorry i said i was dropping it and then i was curious no you're fine um but yeah so there's, like, I guess, I think this is in the old Sanderson sisters' house, which also, in the first movie, was a museum, which is now a gift shop. Is it a or gift a, shop, or is it, like, a witchcraft, witchcraft shop? Oh, I think it's, like, a it's witchcraft one or the other. shop. It's basically the same thing. Um, they have, they're friends with the owner, who is... Uh, Gilbert. Who, what is his actual name? He's, he's a, in... He's in Ted Lasso. He's also an actor. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, I know he's in Ted Lasso. I can't remember his name, though. But he's the one who tries to get my baby boy, Sam, off of the team. Yes. But he was very good in this. I really liked him. Yes, he's really funny, I feel like actually. he was in something else I've seen. He definitely was. He's in a lot of comedies. For some reason, I thought he was in a Jordan Peele movie, but he's definitely not. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, oh, so, oh, we should also say Becca's born on Halloween, which makes it all better. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but Gilbert gives Becca and Izzy, like, a candle to do, like, their ritual in the woods for her birthday every year. Which, is it, like, a witch spell, or is it just... I don't know. It okay. must be a witch spell. They conjure up you know who. Yeah. So, obviously, if you watch the first movie, the only way to get the witches to come back is to light up the black flame candle. But you have to be a virgin, and they don't yeah. let you forget that in the first one. Every single line, every other line is, yeah, he's a virgin. virgin. And I'm like, okay, I get it. He's 15. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> um I think that was like one of my biggest pet peeves and I'm like oh yeah, my god I get they it they do say it a lot I get it that's that's the plot <laughs> yes um so Gilbert gives them a black pink candle which they don't know so they go in the woods and they and do Gilbert's their ritual a little shithead. he's a little shit disturber he is he really is so obviously they go into the woods they do their ritual they light it they blow it out and all of a sudden, a black flame comes up. And obviously, they're both virgins. And the Sanderson sisters are back. And, and... Hold on. It was so good. It was. It had no right being seagoed. No. 
Oh, here you go. It was so good. So good. Like, it was, I think that was when I first realized, oh, this movie is going to be good. Because yeah. that just came so out of nowhere. The and song was choices so in this campy. movie were great. <laughs> it was really good. I also just, like, okay, I hope this doesn't come off wrong, but I guess they kind of do it later. This felt like a drag show. Like, when they just yeah. randomly get up, like, in their, like, they're with the witches, they just come back and they start singing this very, like, campy mm-hmm. song about being back. I'm like, yeah, this would definitely happen at, like, a Halloween-themed drag show. Yeah, absolutely. And I would pay good money to see it. Absolutely. Which, like, I guess that comes back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, from, so basically for the rest of the night, it's like the normal Hocus Pocus, where they're trying to stay alive, because obviously the witches won't kill them to take their soul to become youthful. And I think stay forever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's... I do like this way better, though. I think, like, them, like, just, like, kind of, like, playing around with them and, like, kind of fucking with them a little bit mm-hmm. was a lot more fun than the original. Yes. It will. it also turns into... They see a photo of Cassie's father, who looks exactly like the reverend that tried to wed Winifred off, and they now want to seek revenge on him as well. And this, I thought this is where it was going. When they had the same guy play both parts, I thought he was going to somehow be a warlock, and he was still alive and... That would have been a good plot twist, though. I know. I would have really liked to see that and, like, them battle it head-to-head. And he was, like, he was playing dumb for the most part. And I was like, yeah. oh, he definitely is Warlock just playing dumb to, like, survive. And then that wasn't the case. So I was slightly disappointed in that. Yeah. But I would have liked that. Don't worry. They can do that in number three. Yes. The exactly. Hannah Waddingham. <laughs> exactly. Um, so... <laughs> the Walmart scene was really funny. Well, the uh, Walmart Walgreens. Scene. It was so. That was my second favorite part. <sighs> it was so like it was ridiculous. so ridiculous. He just started drinking it. youthful creams, and I was like gagging because I was like, "That's so nasty." It's but, like, so gross. And then the Snapchat filter, <laughs> where they thought they looked so good, and then saw themselves in the mirror, they're like, "What the hell?" Uh, okay, but like they do look really good. So, like, yeah. clearly, eating the souls of children's work. Yes, it did. Because this is, like, 29 years later, and they all look phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I'm most shocked by Bette Midler, so, like, I don't understand how she's 76. She looks amazing. She looks better now than she did back then. I will give her that. She's kinda, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, Bette. No, no sorry. honestly, <laughs> why do they all kind of low-key look better now? Is Botox, it just because you like MILFs? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, also, Sarah Jessica was, like, I think Carrie Bradshaw at that point when they did the original. And, like, kind of yeah, Carrie it was, Bradshaw. she was way before Carrie Bradshaw. I don't think this movie was made until, what, what year did this movie come out? Because I think Sex and the City was 98. Really? I thought it was 99. 93 is when Hocus Pocus came out. When did Sex and City come out? I feel like it's 98. Yeah, 98. Yeah. This is what, okay, six so it years? was. Dang. I was going to say, maybe, like, the reason <laughs> was, like, oh, she's just Carrie Bradshaw at this point. That's why she looks better now, because we're not as much of a Carrie auntie. <laughs> Not mine. No. Um. Yeah. Um. Oh. Also. So they eventually escape the witches and they go back to Gilbert and Gilbert tricked them. Gilbert knew that he gave them a black flame. Can- they sh- he gave them a black flame candle. Yeah. And he's like, I just wanted to bring the witches back. And I thought that was kind of cute with the storyline where like he saw them that one night back in 1993. Yeah. 
Um, and he became obsessed with them ever since then. I would also love to know who taught him how to make a black flame candle. Yeah. <laughs> because that seems a little difficult. Um, wait, was that explained? Oh, wait. Been taught how to make the candle by... I was going to say, I feel like that was explained. Yeah. Okay. Book. Goddamn book. Yeah. Also, I love that it's just called book. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, so they want to, I mentioned this before, they want to do the Maxima, was it, Magica Maxima spell to take down Cassie's father. <laughs> and So what is Magica Maxima again? Does it tell us? It just to eliminate and take revenge. Okay. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I saw someone from... Girl boss Gatekeep. How many centuries ago that come back yeah. I, I get it I get it you know what men ain't shit yes um so they need to get like ingredients and stuff so they Gilbert obviously is like I'll do it so he digs up Billy and like they have their own little adventure thing of Billy's like I don't like her <laughs> but yes so then Cass not Cassie Beck and Izzy go to one Cassie and try to protect them um, go, try to go protect Cassie's father. Sorry, I'm looking up what the spell means. Oh, you're good. In order to perform the dangerous Magicka Maxima spell, which makes one witch all-powerful, the sisters have to gather the blood of their enemy. So is that what happens at the ending? I guess so. Oh, yeah. Failing to read the warning on the Magicka Maxima spell when he didn't realize that oh, becoming yeah. the most powerful witch would mean losing what she valued most. Or Don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> would lose um, her sanity. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, also... Please, if you're okay. watching this, you already know what happened. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Any other time we spoil stuff, you're like, Sam, you've already seen this. But now, but now, oh, God, sorry, Lexi. Because we, the ending was just too good. That needs Whatever. to have its own moment. Whatever. <laughs> um, I also missed the part where Becca and Izzy got trapped. Really? Yeah. I liked that part. I thought the part was fun. I thought they were in a closet, but they were underground, correct? Yes. They okay. were in, like, a cellar or a okay. dungeon, as they called it. Okay. So I missed how they got trapped, but I saw them get out. Um, and... Winifred, like, is, like, now down to the dungeon, like, flips it up and, like, shoots them down there, and then there's stairs, they get, like, thrown down the stairs, and Becca goes to take a run at it, and they disappear. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Okay. So then they have no way of getting out. But then they also have, like, some kind of, like, potpourri thing. <laughs> yes. And I don't know what it was, but it was, like, magical. <laughs> yeah. And then at, they, like, cast a spell, because they're like, why not let's try? Yeah. And it works, because one of them's got magical powers, apparently. And that's a pretty cool 16th birthday gift I've had. Is it sad well? that I, like, just didn't see that coming when it happened? I'm like, no, oh, shit. I didn't either. When I really feel like maybe we should have realized that, because, like, all the seeds are planted, but. No, I did not get it at all. I really feel like this movie is reminding me of something, and I can't think of what it is. I, yeah, I have that feeling, too. I feel like I'm just seeing a lot no, of... No, it's... Ha like, is it Halloween Town? Maybe. I haven't seen it in, like, two years. So I'm think. thinking of the scene where they try to take down... It's the very first Halloween Town when they try to take down Calabar and the brother... What's his name? I don't know. I don't remember either. But he, remember he starts to get, like, the tingly things in his hands and he becomes... Yeah. A that's what I'm getting. Okay, I think that's what it is. Okay. Um... But yeah, so after they obviously escape, they go to get Cassie and try to warn them about the witches are back and we have to find your father. Witches are back. Um, so they wind up actually finding father, but I don't really remember what happens to him. <laughs> Who do they find? Like, they go to Cassie's house right. and the dad comes back, but I don't remember what happens to him. Um, I'd love to say I know, 
but I don't remember. <laughs> Guys, we have a podcast. We're very good at this. Yeah, I don't remember. And it doesn't tell us. Oh, <laughs> no, this is funny. <laughs> they trap them in the salt circle. But the robot right. to vacuum it up, which I think is hilarious and was so perfect. Oh, yeah. That was one of the plot lines when they were in Walgreens. They needed to, like, take brooms. But there was only yeah. one actual broom. So, like, Sarah ends up using a Swiffer. Uh-huh. And there's nothing else. So, Mary but has to use like some Roombas. That's a nod to the first one because Mary yeah. uses the vacuum in the first one. And obviously, yeah. like, people still use vacuums. But Roombas are more. Yeah. And now, uh huh. Um, I thought that was funny. That at first, I'm like, Are you on a hoverboard? I'm like, Oh, fuck, it's a Roomba. That's great. Great, iconic. Um, BRB going to buy a Roomba to see if I can, for real, if I can. Oh, okay. So, whatever they want to obviously, since the salt is like gone, they escape and they steal Cassie. And then, yeah, Becca and Izzy are like, We have to go save her. So they go off and save her in the Forbidden Forest. No good things happen in that forest, I swear to God. <laughs> um, Only one good thing happens in that forest, and it rhymes with Shmana Schmodingham. Yes, for real. <laughs> um, so, oh, so instead of getting Mayor's blood, they use Cassie's blood because she's a descendant. So Cassie is actually a descendant from the Reverend because her father is a descendant of the Reverend. So they use her blood to complete the Magica Maxima spell, Maxima Magica, whatever. Magica Maxima, I think it is. Okay. And they start to cast the spell and like they become powerful and whatever. But Becca, what is? So yeah, they're not all magical. It's only Winifred, no. right? Yes. For some reason, I thought they all were. So then when they all, like, get the powers, I'm like, huh? Yeah. But, but it like, yeah, because Sarah's the one who, like, lures the kids in. Mm-hmm. And I forget what Mary does. Does she make the potion? Maybe. She, she just might. annoyed me, so I kind of just, like, looked away every time she was on uh, screen. I don't know. It's okay. Okay, so they're casting the spell, and it's, like, half cast, and the book starts to go towards Winifred, but Becca's like, you don't have to listen to her. And I don't know how she did that, but the book comes to her, and I was like, all right, good for you. Well, Um, Becca's a witch. But book shows Becca the warning sign of the Magical Maximus Bell. And she's the only one that knows that as of now. Like, Winifred, now one, the sisters, none of them know. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. Um, but they do decide to let Winifred know that that is what the warning sign is. Yeah. But... Wait, I think I'm reading this backwards. Okay, wait, I missed something. Because this doesn't have the point where they're trying to cast the spell on Becca and she's using her powers. Did you miss that part? No, I think I did catch that part. Because then they all kind of just like look at her and like, oh shit. Okay. We're going to backtrack a little bit. (laughs) So, at this point, it's kind of become apparent to everyone that Becca is actually a witch, because when Winifred casts the spell on Becca, she somehow brings up a force field, and she realizes that with the help of Izzy and Cassie, that the force will become stronger. Yeah. So they all hold hands, and which is basically essentially what Winifred is, obviously, because Mary and Sarah don't have powers, but when they all bind together, her powers are more powerful. Whatever. So then they wind up escaping the spell. 
and then that's when Becca learns of the warning sign from Book of what happens if you cast the Magical Maxima spell. And then Sarah and Mary start to disappear, which was a total plot twist that I did not expect and then got really upset over. Um, I did not expect that to hurt as much as it did. But they just started disappearing. And I was like, what the fuck? And then... So when a Fred just watches them go to dust and she realizes that being with her sisters and the two people that she loves most is more than trying to stay young and be there forever. Listen, even as someone who doesn't like actually have an emotional connection to the original, like when they yeah. were like disappearing, I'm like, <laughs> yes. okay. For real. Again, I feel like this is reminding me of something. I don't know, man. It's there's there's something else there's I know. Something. Um so Winifred wants them to like bring Sarah and Mary back, but they cast a spell to where Winifred disappears as well as she joins Sarah and Mary, which is depressing once again. <laughs> yeah. Um so sad. So I think that means that the Sanderson sisters are officially gone forever. Yeah. Depressing. Depressing. That's, yeah. It got, you know, I think we just need to stop making sequels because like, why do we keep killing off the characters? Right. Because they did it to Meryl Streep. Shut up. Like, I think we just need to stop bringing in like, I don't want to say old, but, like, older actresses and then killing uh-huh. them off. Because it's just not okay. I know you're not a Bet fan, but, like... No, I... Still, it was depressing. Um... I felt like I also missed something. One thing I, like, just couldn't overlook, though, and it's very nitpicky, again. I There's just something about the way, like, Sarah's eyebrows like connected to her eyeshadow that I don't feel like was a thing in the first one but maybe it was but it just like threw me the entire time I'm like this looks so weird I don't remember that but you also watched the two pretty back to back I I think I watched it within like a day of each other yeah I didn't watch I haven't watched the original Hocus Pocus yet this year ah I'm gonna look Um, look okay so obviously since the witches disappeared. Billy disappears, which is kind of sad as well. Um, I was also... Gilbert has a black hat, and I know Thackeray Banks, like, got to live his happy life with his sister wherever she may be now. But I swear Gilbert's cat was, like, Thackeray Banks. Yeah. I kind of wish it was. That would have been a good plot twist as well. That would have um, been a really good plot twist. Yeah. So, at the end of the movie... The girls are walking off, and they kind of walk off in the same way that Winifred, Sarah, and Mary do, which is, like, a nod to them. But you can also see the queen witch fly off into the distance. Thank you. Is it a hint? Up, setting up for sequel three. And yeah. wait, did you watch the actual after credit scene? Yes. Okay. I had to look it up. I'm like, is the like, after credit scene just them singing? And I'm like, there's no way. No. So then I had to, like, look it up, and it's like, no, like, actually go to the end of the credits. And I'm like, yes, okay. I didn't know that until I went on TikTok after. Yeah. I would have skipped it if you didn't tell me. Yeah. Because, like, as soon as it ended, I, like, I got to the credits, and I, like, just, like, hit pause. So I would have actually missed the music video, too, which is very disappointing. The best part. Yeah. The best part. I told you to watch it, too. Did you? Yeah, I think I did. I was like, if you don't get through the watch, the rest of the movie, just go to the ending credits. <laughs> okay, I think you maybe said ending or something. Okay. Yeah, so if you go all the way past the credits, there's a post Yeah, I scene. wish they would have done that maybe a little sooner in, because it's like 10 minutes of credits. I know. And like, there's a, probably a lot of people who missed that. Yes, but um, there's a second Black Moon candle out there. But I guess... It does have, like, a skip credits button. So, like, when I saw that, I'm like, eh, that's easier. That is true. That is true. But, yes. Black Candle. Part two. 
So I think that I think it would means... focus on like Becca and them probably and this. Yeah. So. And I was actually... kind of upset if it wasn't because I really liked them. Yes. No. Definitely. But which was Fran... really surprising. Yes, I never liked the new kids ever. Right. Where's Fran's messages? Fran sent me this. That someone had a theory that. Someone said that the third one should be about Hannah's character starting shit and the girls bringing back the sisters as good witches to help them stop Hannah's character, which I think would be great. That would be really good. Because that. And I feel like that would bring the entire. Yeah, that too. But I feel like it would actually bring like the series like full circle. Just kind of bringing it back to the one who like technically started it all. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And and then, of, again, Halloween Town, very Calabar. It is, it is. And that would be a woman villain. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And then my um, my list, female villains, part two, Hannah Waddingham, yeah. endo article. Yes. Um. So. For the people that felt very much nostalgia throughout this film, there was so many Easter eggs. Yes, read me the Easter eggs. Okay, so a lot of them were basically in that one flash mob scene at the Halloween festival. There was a lot of people that were dressed up as characters from the original movie, like Madonna, um, Satan, the Supremes. The guy that was dressed up as Satan and then his wife was Penny and Gary Marshall, which were no longer with us. So I thought that was cute that they were in that. Yeah. And there's also a scene where the witches go look at people's houses and in one of the houses, they're actually watching the original Hocus Pocus. I love that. I totally mm-hmm. miss that. Um, one of the others is that Becca, Izzy, and Cassie are all wearing the same colors as the Sanderson sisters. Becca's wears more greens and purples. Izzy's more reds and purples. And Cassie is pinks and purples. Interesting. And apparently they all have necklaces. And Becca has a green gemstone. Izzy has a red. And Sarah, Cassie's has either a pink or purple, I think it said. You know, as much as I didn't like the original, you can tell, like, how much, like, care was put into mm-hmm. the sequel, though. Yes. Which I think um, is really good. Because if you're going to remake or, like, make a sequel to something that beloved, yeah, you got to do it good. Someone also said that Cassie's was a... Cassie's outfit was a mix of Max and... I forgot the girl's name. Not Danny, the other one. I want to say Sarah, but definitely not Sarah. It's not Sarah. I feel like it's something like it. Hold on. It starts with an S. Is it Sam? No. Wouldn't have been surprised. Every time there's an annoying character, that name is Sam. That's really expensive. Uh, Oh, Emily. (laughs) It's not an S. Oh, my God, no. (laughs) Um, It's a mixture of Emily and Max's. She wears the tie-dye shirt with the cardigan that Emily is wearing. Okay. Um, Miss Hannah Wanningham's outfit is the same outfit Danny is wearing in the first movie. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. And then I have to go to TikTok to find this one because this man didn't have his same videos on. But Winifred says something. He says she says something to Max, which is basically what happens to her in the in this movie. Well, because deep, deep comes Max, he's a fool for giving up his life for his sister. Okay. So when Winifred's taking Danny, he tells Max that he's a fool for taking his life over his sister's. Winifred did the same in this movie. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, right, right, right. One or more. Mr. and Mrs. Sing. Not once. We get them twice. Madonna Cobra moment, which no, not Lady Gaga or Katy Perry. 
Madonna, the team which is hair and the color of their outfits corresponding to the Sanderson systems. Okay, the fact that Mother Witch here is watching them as they're turning into the new coven makes me think that these girls are going to be in a series. And this black flame candle means there's going to be a third movie with the sisters. Yeah, I hope everybody could hear that because I'm not cutting that out. The shock supremes are in the original. Okay, Mother Witch here, who you all said is heck. Her outfit is Danny's outfit from the original. The house right here on the billboard. Oh. There's a billboard of the mayor, and there's a house in the background, and it's Max and Danny's houses in the original movie. Yeah, I didn't notice the billboard. Someone else pointed this out. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Denison's house. Gilbert is whistling. I put a spell on you. He goes into the shop. Her outfit right here, the combination of Max's outfit, also Denison's outfit, the sweater. Now this one. There's another one. Oh, so this girl, so one girl thinks that they're going to get an entire show of Becca, Izzy, and Cassie, of the Sanderson sisters, of becoming, like, the new witches. I wouldn't mind that, though. No. Like I said, I really enjoyed the kids, so if they want to continue to do shit, that's fine. Being such a miserable human. I think that's all the main ones. And then I think I mentioned they walk away, like, at the end of the movie, like, the sisters walk all the time, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. Interesting. Yeah. So, there was a lot of people that didn't like this movie. As, really? like, OG fans of, like, the original which I feel like those people are a little close-minded. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this guy, hold on, I'll play this TikTok. Because <laughs> it was perfect. This is by Jaren, Jaren Milan. He said, imagine me, Sister Milan. I, like, he, like, kept, like, he would, like, come in and then he'd disappear. And then he'd come in and disappear. So I don't know if it's capturing one of our mics or something. Oh, maybe. He said, basically, imagine being such a miserable human being that you watch a movie like Hocus Pocus 2 and shit on the script when these girls came out of 30 years of retirement to yeah. come back to play the sisters. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there are just some things you can overlook when they slipped back into those roles like butter. Yes. And, like, did I expect it to be exactly like the original or better? No. But, like, we've seen way worse sequels made yeah and this was one of the better ones and like as he said like this is nostalgia done in the right way yeah and it felt very nostalgia i don't it i feel like i blame everything on a generational gap but i this might be part of a generational gap as well because it felt very modern and geared toward people our age rather than the actual children born in like the 90s and teenagers where they're like now grown adults and I don't think it's I think it's a little too modern for them maybe <laughs> yeah um did I like any reviews on Letterbox? I think I did oh once again the song selection one way or another was great. Yeah, we didn't talk about the drag show scene. Oh, I forgot about that. That was such a good add in. And the fact that they didn't win made it a better. Right? <laughs> um, someone literally, oh, did we just get Han Hannah Waddingham baited? No, literally. It was very offensive. Yes, it was. What other songs did they sing in this movie? Because they were great. Um, did they say, I'm kind of disappointed I Put a Spell on You wasn't in it. Because, like, yeah. that is so synonymous with Hocus Pocus that I was very disappointed. It's fine. I played Somebody's Rock, Somebody's Watching Me, which that song's been stuck in my head because of TikTok. It's on TikTok all the time. Yeah. I don't recognize any of these other songs, but, like, when they were playing, I was like, this is good. <laughs> yeah. 
Elton John wrote The Witches Are Back. That is why it's a bop. That's why it's so good. Good for him. <laughs> we love it. We really um. just love to see it. <laughs> I just always like comments about gay people. <laughs> the gays used all their collective energy to conjure this oh film. And honestly, yeah. I'm surprised I never saw this comment. I don't want to hand Titty on the screen for five minutes. Deserve five stars. <laughs> exactly. A star for every minute. Should get ten stars because, you know. Two. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> Oh, God, what'd you find now? <laughs> and I was thinking, this means a Mamma Mia style. Everyone gets together, sing along, and they... <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> yeah. Someone said, so this is, like, good, right? Good, good. Like, even worthy sequel good. Yeah, I had a great time. It's all just sequel done right. <laughs> it was. Oh, my God. Wow, I feel so stupid. This girl said, the Sanderson sister singing this... The bitch is back from Elton John, but changed it to the witches are back. <laughs> How did I miss that? I like that every single time we do a movie review, there's just like a good like 10 minute portion of us just reading letterbox reviews. Because they're great. They're so funny for no reason. Like there are some people, including myself sometimes, who do just like very in-depth like reviews on movies but like the best are the funny ones what did you find now how do i get a kardashian style tv show but for the sanderson sisters i'd give a vital organ if i must that would be amazing <sighs> oh my god i would I will watch the Sanderson sisters go shopping, try to drive a car, opening up a bank account, trying to understand cryptocurrency. Oh my god, them opening up a bank account would be the funniest shit ever. I know. Sending a text message, literally anything, it will be seated. Give me a mockumentary, please. Anything to bring more of them. That would be actually great. I would pay good money. I like that there's way more um, reviews now than when I first watched it. Mm-hmm. The Sinister Powder Puff Girls, am I right? By the way, did Carrie Bradshaw ditch her click? I want a Bette Midler and Kathy um, cameo on and just like that. Like that's I would love I, it. That's what I need. Like I just need Bette coming in and like just kind of destroying Miranda for some reason. I just feel like those two would go head to head very, very well. I feel like it would turn into like their first wives club. Scene, yeah. Where like Bet is like for like just bashing on them. Yeah. I would pay good money for that. Oh my God. But no, that really wouldn't work. I was gonna say Bet should be like the manager of the podcast, but it I was going to say she should be Cynthia's mom, but I feel like we've already seen her. Have we? I feel like we have. Or she's dead. She the might, I think Miranda's mom is dead. I think there was a whole episode around that, so let's never mind. It's a nostalgia crapalooza. Okay. Okay, this is a one, a half-star review. And they said, for the love of God, can we please start burning witches at the stake again? <laughs> I just, that's brutal and kind of funny. Are we supposed to root against them because I support everything they do? I 
The Sanderson sisters lived, served cunt, died, were brought back to life, served cunt, died, were brought back to life again, served cunt, then died. <laughs> That's all you need to know about these movies, man. Someone said I'm convinced this movie was written by drag queens. <laughs> it probably was. Is it just me, or did the Sanderson sisters just get sexier? <laughs> okay, I don't know if this is a diss, but it kind of feels like a diss. But someone gave it two and a half stars and said, never a big fan of the first one. And then there's SJP, the real witches there is. Is that a dig at Sarah Jessica Parker? <laughs> Probably a little bit. <laughs> okay, this was also something that I was, I just expect this for every movie now. I was expecting Becca to be gay, and I was yeah. expecting, like, I kind of, I kind of saw some vibes between her and Izzy. Okay, this one says was low-key shipping Becca and Cassie the whole time. I could see that, too. Yeah. Oh, my God, someone said, I swear to God, if the Thackeray bitch comes back, I'm going to lose him. Give me this was before it came out. Yeah. And there's, I literally was watching this, and I told Fran I was watching it. And I'm like, you're fucking joking. This guy's name is Thackeray. No wonder this movie I don't like. What the fuck? Who names their kid Thackeray? <laughs> well, it's the 1600s. I you don't should care. watch it on Freeform when they do like their fun fact episodes. They do a Thackeray count. God, they should do a virgin count. All right. They probably do that Play as well. Play a drinking game, man. Gayest serve Disney has ever done. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Having a blunt with the Sanderson sisters on Halloween night would go crazy. <laughs> yes. Sarah Jessica Parker has clearly been eating a lot of children to stay young for this movie. Oh my god. That candle looked like a dildo you weren't supposed to put in the dishwasher. These reviews are amazing. <laughs> There, some are, like, really serious, some are, like, this movie's trash, and some are just great. Letterbox is honestly my favorite app invention ever. Eagerly anticipating the expansion of the Hocus Pocus cinematic universe, and that is me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. These are so funny. Okay, I can't keep it. <laughs> what the hell happened to Sarah Sanderson's boobs and horniness? Weird. You know, great point. <laughs> yeah. She was not as horny as we needed her to be. When did you... What was my reveal? <laughs> What was? I think my review was literally. Oh, I actually gave a serious review for once in my life. Oh, go off. So it's your turn to finally read an in-depth analysis review you gave on the podcast. Mine are not good. Go off. I had very low expectations going into this, and I'm sort of glad I did because I enjoyed this movie more than I ever thought I could. I don't think the original and sequel are comparable because they gave off to different vibes for me the sequel is fun and campy and just an overall light-hearted halloween movie for all ages to enjoy bet sarah and kathy didn't miss a single beat even after being out of these roles for 30 years my only complaint is that hannah Wanningham and her angelic boys needed more screen time but hopefully that will happen in the third installment this film will most definitely be added onto my annual halloween film rewatch list yeah um and in a turn of events <laughs> my review was three lines <laughs> i only have two thoughts one, Hannah Waddingham deserved so much more screen time. Two, the Walgreens sequence is the best part. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to, like, put that on my, like, film account. Follow me. It's Filmographile on Instagram, guys. Um, <laughs> I forgot to post that. <laughs> but, like, also I'm scared that people on Instagram will just, like, attack me because they're kind of scary. It's fine. Also, I don't really have much else to say about it. Yeah. Like, I just think Hannah Waddingham was hot, and she Walgreens, was. Is, like, the Walgreens scene was just pure art, and I think it every was. movie should have that. It was. 
if Walgreens doesn't make that their new advertisement, like, imagine that. Just be like, oh, stay young for Halloween with Walgreens. That would not be ingest. great. That'd be great. <laughs> not actually ingest <laughs> unless you are a Sanderson ascendant. That would be great, actually. I don't know what we're doing next week. So, we can talk about this after. Okay. Oh, you have more to say. Just, for, like, an idea. Okay. We'll talk about it after. Okay. I'm intrigued. We go in suspense. Oh, I'm excited. They're leaving me an anticipation. <laughs> oh, my God. I was listening to that today. And I was, like, a millisecond off from getting it right. So I was close. so disappointed with myself. So close. One day I'll get it. I'll have it by the next time I come visit you. Okay. Sounds good. It'll be our new never-ending story. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we have to never-ending story because that is apparently good luck for us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> I think so. I feel like there's other stuff I wanted to say, but I think I, we covered it. This episode was really chaotic, but it what else was. Did expect? But like our last two have been not chaotic, and it's <laughs> yeah. like just the brand. So we had some rest and relaxation the past week, so we're better we really now. <laughs> yeah. We're at like full energy now. It's yeah. Halloween. We've been reinvigorated. That yeah. was the that was what was wrong. It was September. It wasn't yet spooky season. It's the season of our um sign, our zodiac sign. Yes. We got a few so, more few, oh, it's a few weeks, but we're getting there. But like it's basically our time. Yeah. So is. like we come up from the dead. I don't know what it's feeling like in Canada, but it's fucking freezing here. And it's I went out so outside. Cold. I went outside last night. I was like, I feel like there should be a serial killer on my block. Like, I feel like this should be a Halloween movie, like, weather. <laughs> Hang on. It was a degree here today, but I don't know what the... 33 degrees for you. That's winter. Yeah. That's not even fall. That was a degree this morning at, like, 6, 7 a.m.? Our high was 52 degrees Fahrenheit. I wish. But it was it was windy as heck today. It's currently, yeah, it's going to go down to 4 degrees at 7 a.m. Like. So what is 9 degrees right now? Because that's what we're at. <laughs> you know, I really think you guys should just switch to Celsius because this is really annoying. It's really annoying. Yes, it is. 48 degrees it is right now. Oh, it's 49 here. We're good. Oh, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's very cold. <laughs> but, like, it feel, it just feels like spooky season. It really does. This is the most spooky season that has ever spooky season. <laughs> it really is. But <laughs> like, I was I like, decorating, and I came in, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I just have to set up for the podcast. Like, let me just go, like, make some pizza. I literally stood in the bathroom and just kept my hands under warm water because they were numb. <laughs> it was so cold. And I was doing, like, spider web, like, cobweb on my, like, house. So then my little fingers were, like, numb. Ugh. I had to break out like a I'm actual like scared jacket for winter if it's this cold. So I think we're just excited that it actually feels like spooky season. Yeah, it's a vibe. It I is. don't I feel like we just need to have like a full spooky season month on the podcast. I feel like that was your idea. <laughs> and we'll get there. So surprise guys, don't know what we're doing next week. <laughs> yeah. Is that all we wanted to say then? Yeah, we'll do something spooky next week. Oh, also, um, hashtag women for Hannah Waddingham. Oh, always. Yeah. Always. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us on this episode of Enter the Fangirls. You can keep up with us on social media. Our Twitter is Enter Fangirls, and our YouTube and Instagram are Enter the Fangirls. Make sure you follow us wherever you listen to your podcast, and we can't wait for you to join us on our next episode. Once again, I'm Lexi. I'm Sam, and this has been Enter the Fangirls. <laughs>